Welcome in uh, Victoria world. Um, this uh, story begin in uh, 1919 from a family, two family, uh, Picchetti and uh, Dario Dari. At the beginning, the name was uh, Dari and Picchetti, so the two family together. They started the society to produce uh, special accordions and the tradition continue in the year until uh, today. In the year uh, uh, 1930, the name is changed from Dari and Picchetti to Victoria because uh, they have sold a lot of uh, accordions in the um, countries where they speak uh, English. So Victoria was uh, a better, better name uh, instead of Dari Picchetti, that was difficult for uh, pronunciation. After the, the Second War, um, Victoria make um, a fusion with, with the Titano, that uh, was a great name in the United States. And this cooperation uh, was for uh, about 50 years. In that time, uh, in America, uh, Victoria has sold about uh, 60,000 uh, accordions. My father has bought Victoria factory in uh, 1984. And my family has had a long tradition in uh, accordions because my grandfather was uh, uh, the chef in uh, Paolo Soprani factory, a specialist for the reeds. My grandfather was a specialist for steel because he's worked in a army factory. So he know everything about steel and the, the production of weights. After the Second War, my grandfather go away from Paolo Soprani factory and make a foundation of his own reeds factory. The reeds are the, the sound the, the pieces that give the sound of the accordion. So is one of the important uh, parts of the accordion. They started to produce uh, their own uh, reeds. And uh, as I told them, my father has bought a Victoria factory in the 84. We are a family of uh, six brothers. Now uh, four work into the Victoria. Um, at the beginning of uh, 90, 91, uh, I've known my wife uh, Elke, that uh, she is an accordion teacher, and uh, we continue to produce uh, the accordion with uh, uh, also new philosophy for uh, artists and uh, sounds. Beginning of uh, 2000, we start the production of uh, wood accordion. The wood accordion has been also made before, but uh, we have the idea to produce with the same wood of uh, violins. So exactly like uh, violins, with the same uh, wood, the same glue and the same uh, colors. So the result was uh, very good because the resonance uh, was uh, different. So we will create a new instrument. This uh, we have had a good uh, success and uh, we still continue to make improvement uh, for the accordions.
The idea of, of this wooden accord, especially of the wooden accordions, is that uh, we were on the research to get a better sound in the accordions and to have lighter accordions too. So this was a, the main project, to have a, a, an, another kind of sound, another quality of sound and to make instruments that are not heavy, which is a big problem for accordions player. So um, we decided um, to go with this violin wood, woods, which are red spruce and maple wood, which are very good acoustic woods. The violins are done in, in, in this wood uh, and for hundreds of years and uh, cut it in a certain way. They give the best result for, for the sound of the instrument. So the accordion has a, the main uh, sound maker and the accordion is the reed but it's fixed on the wood and it's fixed inside of this room which is wood so uh, changing the wood of the of the body of the accordion changes the, the kind of sound we get so we have different models like um, the, the new one the puma which is in red spruce it's very light and it has a very warm and dark sound while uh, the, the poeta the one like goran plays it uh, is made into maple wood. It's still warm, but a little bit more uh, with the harmonies coming out. So it's a little bit more sharp next to, to the... So every, every instrument has, has its own character. And um, like every player has its own, his own character. And, and what we try to, to do is that um, we, we work a lot of, uh, together with artists in all over the world. And we try to understand their needs because, you know, we, we have to make an instrument which helps the artist to express his music through the instrument. So as better we do our work, the better the, the artists are able to, to uh, express themselves through the music. And um, we work with, with artists like uh, probably number one jazz accordion player is Richard Galliano, who has his accordion since over 50 years. And uh, whenever he comes to the factory, it's like a little bit of fireproof, you know. We have to be sure that everything works in a perfect way. And, and we, we know he plays 200 concerts a year, so he's really somebody that plays every day. And not only concerts, but he makes trial and, and, and uh, recording sessions and, and stuff. So the instrument has to be in the best condition it can be. So we learned a lot from these people about have good compression in the accordion, no air leaks, and uh, good keyboards. Uh, and this is very personal, you know, somebody likes a lighter keyboard, others like a heavier keyboard. And it's different also from one to another country. So we just try to to communicate as much, as much as possible with the artist that we, we can get an idea about what people need. For, for example, in the Balkan countries, normally we need a very light keyboard and the keyboard has not to go very deep because uh, you play a lot of ornaments and, and you need fast keyboards. Then Germans have a little bit uh, slower music and they are a little bit more, I don't know, used to heavy keyboards. So the keyboards are going deeper and normally they are heavier with the springs. So we just try to, to understand the needs for the different markets and, and working with great artists, we try to be as good as possible able to make the instruments on their needs but it's a never-ending evolution and uh, we try to be critic and open ear with, with open ears so we are happy when people tell us listen i think you could this change this or make this better because it's important for the development of the accordion it's a it's a never-ending story like you are on a research we are always on a research and to get an evolution on, on the instruments and I think that's very important and, and that's probably the main thing in our philosophy about the instrument. We want to make it, it better for the artist. It's not for us. I mean, it, of course, it's a satisfaction to see a good artist playing on the instrument, but it's for the artist that it has to be as perfect as possible. And that is probably the passion that we have behind um, accordion making. I'm an accordion player, my husband uh, plays flute, so we are many musicians in the factory and we, ha we have a lot of contact with musicians which is probably the biggest satisfaction in our work.
the materials we use in this accordions are all Italian woods. They come from Val di Fiemme, which is a part where all the violin makers also take the wood. It's a very special uh, kind of part in Italy where the, the earth gives special minerals into the wood and that makes it sounding better. So we take the wood only from there and has to be natural staged. So it, it, it's not uh, cooked in the oven or something like that, but it's, it, it's naturally seasoned for se seven to ten years. So that makes the, the wood also very expensive. But I think it's important, you know, we are talking not about a, a chair or a, a table, we are talking about a musical instrument. So it has to be good quality. Whatever you, you put in, inside has to be a very good quality. The idea for the Puma actually came up uh, working together with the artists which are playing concerts, which are traveling a lot with accordions because on the airplane you only can carry on something that is under 10 kilo usually and uh, this is 9 kilo so even if you have a backpack around you can carry it but that's not the main reason. The main reason is you have to carry it on the travel and you have to carry it during the concert so uh, many people have trouble with the backs when they play accordion and uh, of course we had, in that time we still were working with uh, Frank Morocco who, who uh, was uh, 80 years old and playing on his feet. And also there we started to research how we can make instruments as light as possible, you know, also for to give older musicians the possibility. But then we figured out also the others were happy about this. So it was a good feedback also from younger generations. We have a um, player from Austria, Klaus Payer, who had an accident some years ago. and. Uh, and he really measured like 50 grams. He told me, oh, this is 50 grams more than before. And, this is, and I was thinking, ooh, you know, but it helps. It helps, you know, to concentrate on what I have to do to make it lighter. So we took out everything, everything of this instrument that it's not necessary, like uh, strap holders and master register. You know, I think accordion players have the tendency to put too much into the accordion and they don't look for the sound. And uh, we try to go back, you know, concentrating on sound and take everything away what you don't need. And at the end you get a light accordion and it sounds good because it's, it's, uh, it's done with the best materials. We have a special treatment inside of the Casotto, which I cannot tell because it's a secret. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a patent pending secret. So um, we just try to always to develop and, and to go ahead to find new streets in this instrument. So. Uh, um, this, this new instrument, the Puma, was sold many times and the players that have it are very happy and yeah, I, I just, I'm happy that they don't have to carry all this weight with themselves, so. I worked for, for about six years with Frank Morocco, who was uh, probably the, the, the first American jazz accordion player who, who has um, developed his solo style and um, he, he did a lot of concerts in, in Europe in the last years and that was a good experience for me to, to travel around and to new other festivals and um, to do seminars and workshops and from there I developed the idea that we have to to develop this also here in Castelfidardo. So last year we did a new festival 
which is called the World of Accordion. And um, inside of this festival, we try to to get space for many things, not only for uh, competition and um, uh, concerts, but also for workshops and seminars about any kinds of uh, of things around the accordion. So. Um, what we try to do now, we, we moved the factory to another building, which gives us a chance to, to increase also the, the production of the instruments. And we moved our showroom, which was uh, for 14 years in a little place in the entrance of Castel Fidardo. So we just moved to a bigger one, which is this one where we are sitting in this moment. And here we have about uh, 300 square meter altogether where we can uh, develop uh, acoustic concerts with till about 100 guests. We can have seminars, we can have workshops and um, together with us in this exposition we have the biggest accordion in the world and uh, very soon also the biggest uh, diatonic instrument in the world. So we just try to make a, 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 a kind of center place inside of the city which is uh, the heart of accordion production where people can meet, where people can uh, exchange the experiences about accordion where we can introduce uh, new music styles, like now we, uh, from 30th April to uh, 5th of May, we will have the seminar with Gorin about Macedonian music, and we will have coming people from uh, Germany, from Denmark, from Italy, from France, from uh, Australia, so from very far countries. They're just coming for this, this seminar here to Castelfidardo, and we will let, let them the possibility to uh, enjoy the museum and, and the area here, good food, and this all together with uh, fantastic music. So we just think, you know, music is not an isolated thing. It's, it's a, a beautiful thing that gives a bridge between different cultures and which gives the possibilities for people from all over the world to meet. And we want to be this meeting point. <laughs> about uh, Italian and uh, German connection. Cooperation. Cooperation. <laughs> it works quite okay. It's like uh, Schumacher and the Ferrari, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Schumacher don't feel much good. No. <laughs> no, Schumacher, okay, in this world he's not in a good health situation. But, um, you know, I, I think it's a good combination because uh, I'm the one that's very systematic and the Italians have the fantasy. So together we, we probably, <laughs> we are quite good to combine something valuable for the market, I don't know. It seems that it works. Thank you. 
Thank you.